Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for a nice greeting. I'm very impressed. So this is going to be a media art session, and the four of us are going to uh, do a talk for uh, two hours. And uh, my name is uh, Tanigawa of JTQ, who will be serving as a moderator as well as a facilitator of this session. So before we start, I would like to uh, ask uh, the speakers to say a few words. My name is Mizuguchi. Very nice to meet you. My name is Aki Inomata. Very nice to meet you. My name is Kinya Tagawa. Nice to meet you. So today, um, we are going to have media art session. Uh, the possibilities of cities and media art is the theme. Um, we would like to talk about the, uh, the future of uh, the city, which is going through mediatization. So I have been thinking how we're going to spend the two hours, but um, I think we will, first of all, use the first hour uh, to, uh, for, uh, for each of us to talk about what kind of projects we are working on. Uh, from myself, uh, I will make a speech on uh, media ambition, Tokyo, as the organizer of the event. Uh, each person is given 15 minutes uh, to give a personal presentation. And in the second half of the session, as I've already explained to the speakers, yesterday I asked the speakers uh, to provide me with three three themes that um, each of the speaker is uh, interested in. So they each of them came up with three keywords. So I have put together all the uh, keywords, the 12 of them, uh, which will be shown on the screen. And the audience uh, will be choosing the theme or the keyword that we would like to discuss on. So it's rather analog approach, but we would like to make sure that the second half of the session will be interactive. So starting with myself, uh, we would like, I would like to start the personal presentation. So Media Ambition Tokyo is a project I would like to uh, explain. I would like to show you some images of what we have done with that event for the past five years. Thank you. 
look back on the five years in two and a half minutes. So the event started in 2013, and uh, uh, in 2013, for the first event, we, including overseas countries, uh, we have been able to observe different installations, and um, when there are uh, events held outside of Japan, uh, we thought that um, we haven't had a lot of uh, places or platforms where we are able to showcase what we are doing in Japan. So there are a lot of artworks, but there are a very limited number of opportunities where we are able to sh show to the Japanese people. So we decided that we need to come up with an opportunity where we can showcase what we have in our archives, technology, art, or, or media, whatever it is, uh, we wanted to start to uh, showcase uh, new technologies uh, to the audience or to the Japanese people. So we looked at the global event calendar and uh, we identified that from the end of February to the beginning of March, it, see, it seems as though that uh, people in the press or people in the media have time to come to Japan. So we adjusted uh, the timing of the event so uh, to uh, match with the schedule of um, the people uh, we want our event to be covered by. So we decided to link with another event to be held in Bongi, uh, Art and Tech Center, Tokyo. That kind of branding we wanted to communicate to the outside. If we start doing that, we thought that we would be able to expand our activities. So with a very limited number of people, we started this event back in 2013. And back then, the concept that we came up with for this event is shown on the screen. MAT implements a tech culture to urban city. So what is media art? What is technology art? Furthermore, what is fine art? Technology art, media art, which is it? It's not that it's not that kind of discussion that we would like to have in an event. It's more like technology or a state of the art way of expressing. It's not something unique to the creators or artists. Uh, in Japan, we have many electric manufacturers. There are many people who are engaged in different jobs uh, related to uh, technology. So, regardless of uh, what you do or regardless of what your position you're in, we want to, to show uh, things or technologies uh, that could make your life more exciting. So whether it's art, whether it's a, a technology, we thought that this is something that could be shared with the same type of interest by the audience. So we decided not to, have to create a borderline of a genre or sectors. Since um, I have been uh, watching how uh, the manufacturers do their work, they be showcase, uh, if we sh showcase only the finalized products or finished products, uh, it's usually a little bit too late. Sometimes if we don't show the process, if we don't show the evolution, there are many cases. Something that is not really perfect is already in the market. So we wanted the prototype uh, to be shown, even if there are things that could be shown and that could not be shown. We wanted to we thought that maybe some reaction may occur by showing a prototype uh, towards the marketing of the product itself. So those are the kind of ideas that we had initially back in 2013. So what are the contents of the event? There are three major contents. One is exposition, exhibiting, and also live as well as experiences uh, to show some value uh, for the audience to enjoy. And there's also a talk session. Uh, we need to uh, create text out of what we are thinking about or to create something on the internet. It, there are limitations uh, to how we can expand our content concept. So through dialogue and through conversation, we try to communicate our, our concepts. 
so that it could be expanded uh, to a wider public using the internet. And uh, all the creators, all the artists have been very uh, cooperative and uh, uh, we are working together with them. But the next generation, the children or the students, uh, should be given some opportunity uh, to uh, experience uh, the kind of technology that we have today. So we are uh, recently we have been very much focused on holding workshops. So if we start explaining each of the work that we have exhibited, we, we will run out of time. So for example, I would like to share with you what happened in the media ambition Tokyo uh, that was held in February 2017. This is done by Takram. The urban information, city information is being analyzed and it's changing all the time. The information connected to the internet and the visualization, it looks very beautiful. So people find it really interesting. And it's po it's possible to uh, make create changes on the screen. This is done by Inomata-san. I'm sure that she's going to talk about this art artwork later on. I hear a presentation. And Ochiya's work, uh, who is also taking part in ICF, uh, he presented many of his works. And from the overseas, we have uh, invited uh, artists. Many of the artists is Basas. It's a mechanical flower that re would respond. People's. Uh, it actually uh, sends. Uh, the noise of the people, so which means that this artwork is changing all the time. And this is a rhythm by Mizuuchi-san. This is a prototype. Um, and uh, Miyajima's work. So the lights are usually turned off. This is counter void during the media vision. Um, recovery from 311. It's a rewrite project. It's kind of on the street. Uh, event was also uh, held. Live events. Uh, sometimes we used another venue, but live events uh, were held 52 times. Technology events and media expressions and lives were integrated uh, to be presented. Talk sessions were held in different places. This was uh, uh, an event that was held in Apple Store in Ginza. So we, the, the audience, surrounded a screen to, and we were engaged in very free discussions with the audience. And the partner companies who took part in the event or supporting mentors or artists or the friends around them got together to hold talk sessions. And recently, we are seeing num increasing the number of workshops. So uh, Saito-san in the middle, uh, holding his hand. So in this uh, workshop, uh, all the all the participants uh, took their cameras and we went to the crossing of Ropongi, and they took pictures. And the pictures taken were collected, and uh, they were put in a program, and which would create a mock-up of the city, 3D mock-up. So that uh, pro program was actually executed in this workshop. During our discussions, photographs, uh, um, professional art pro photographer take pictures and the pictures uh, with emotional beauty. If we collect all the pictures and uh, come uh, do a modeling to come up with the city, a mock-up, is the city going to look beautiful? And um, I would like to try that once day, one day because we really don't know if the city is going to look beautiful. So these are the kind of processes that we are uh, trying out in the workshops. This is done by staff of Team Labo, T-Side in Daikanyama, where uh, the children were uh, gathered to do a class on programming. Team Lab is very uh, popular among the children. Uh, together with Team Lab, uh, to st study your, you can study about programming. That is extremely attractive for the children. So children will be able to uh, experience art and technology as part of their daily lives. And we are trying to increase such opportunities for the children. And in 2017, uh, the event lasted for 30 days, uh, held in different locations. And the Media Ambitions Scheme, uh, if I were to briefly explain, there is a city in the center, and the creators that exist in the, in the city, partners, there are different types of partners, 
including um, manufacturers and also uh, the people who hold the venues. Uh, we try to put together all the abilities of all, the, all these uh, pieces to try to express uh, what we can. Uh, when we are to show installation, and if you want to show installation, we will need to make need money to make that work, and also you need to release a space to show that installation, and it's extremely costly to show the installation. So therefore, uh, if we have a mechanism in place where the installation can be shown at a sp in a space where an, uh, in an, an unused space, uh, it will increase the uh, the number of opportunities where installation can be expressed. So, by having it being uh, something that could be experienced by the audience, um, that would uh, create something new that would lead to creativity. So this is uh, media. Since it's called Media Ambition Tokyo, uh, this is all about ambition. And yesterday during the opening session, Mr. Chika talked about. Hananomiyakopari, meaning uh, fabulous city of Paris, we need uh, such a uh, name uh, given to Tokyo as well. And we are thinking Art and Tech Tokyo, the city of Art and Tech Tokyo. So we wanted to bring in uh, different uh, types of communication hubs in Tokyo. So Tokyo, which is at the very end of the east side of the world, uh, we want to create um, Japan as a destination for people uh, to come to. So we already know when the next uh, MAT is going to happen, uh, from 9th of February through 25th of February in 2018, and it's going to last for 17 days. Uh, we are trying to uh, make the the period uh, shorter so that we can have it more um, or more of a concentrated events because if we have concentrated schedule it's easier for us to attract people from the outside of Japan especially people in the media and from the press so that's uh, what we would like to do and on the right hand side we have a list of uh, we have a list of uh, venues uh, that we'll be holding different ev events. And we are now, now working and discussing with the uh, different artists and crea creators uh, on what kind of events we'll be holding in the next year. So the members here in this room are the people who took part in the project. And uh, they are the ones who have been supporting the Media Ambition Tokyo. And I'm looking forward to discussing with them. So now, uh, I would like to conclude the discussions on media art. Ambition Tokyo. And in this order, I would like to invite the speakers to make short presentations. So, 15, next 15 minutes uh, is. Uh, I would like to ask Mr. Mizuguchi to make a presentation. This is Mizuguchi. Thank you very much. <coughs> Entertainment is the area I mainly work on using a uh, technology. We are tr uh, I'm trying to create something new. <clears throat> now, looking back on my past uh, art pieces six years ago, Kinect uh, is one technology that is uh, familiar to all of you, I believe. In the past, uh, imaging was one tool, and then shifting into space scanning. So that technology is uh, employed uh, in order to produce this artwork, Child of Eden. The human motions are captured real time by the camera. In fact, uh, the interface, this is the interface that has been used, and in fact, uh, 3D motions of my body are captured in real time in this uh, artwork. This technology is uh, something that is, uh, has not uh, emerged on the surface right now. MR and AR in the future uh, is going to be generalized. And then glass and headset, uh, this kind of technology is going to be incorporated
The latest one is uh, Les Infinite. VR artwork. Twenty sixteen, I think. And uh, prototype uh, was presented uh, in Tokyo. This is so called the tactile suit. And in 2001, this was a classic uh, version that was produced uh, at that time. It is VR, so the latest technology employed. And so these um, particles are expressed in this way. And the 3D technology is to create a frameless image. <coughs> and this has been achieved with this um, technology. This is a VR, so if you are going to experience it in VR, now there was the world on the other side of yourself, but you will find that yourself is immersed in that virtual reality. This is a huge paradigm shift. Uh, this is something I have uh, felt strongly being involved in the project. Uh, individual experience in VR that is very strong, but it is uh, viewed uh, by others. Uh, it is something very odd. And uh, when we at the festival in Tokyo, that we try to put it uh, in the art installation, so individual experience uh, is going to be enhanced or augmented to be shared by the rest of the people. And this is the project that we worked on for that objective. It was great. It, it was like another world. What was it? <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, that was incredible. That was um, I've never experienced anything like that before. But um, those people who appeared on the video, uh, they are not performers. Uh, that those ordinary people who were captured on the video with their permission. People who have uh, who have experienced and this uh, are, are, have no words to express, and because uh, the effects on this are going to be translated into music, and I will come back to this word, uh, uh, synesthesia. A synesthesia is going to be the experience to be shared in the 2D world in the past, for instance. Um, for example, the listening to the color of sound or looking at the sound. Uh, this is uh, something uh, that you can see from afar uh, on the other end of the screen. And that was um, something that you feel distant, but uh, wearing a 3D camera and looking at the 3D TV, it looks like a TV, but the world that is on the other side of yourself. Probably that you feel uneasy in that kind of approach, but that is all gone. So objects are floating in front of you uh, with the high definition, full uh, resolution uh, definition. And then, so with this kind of uh, technology in place, that you can feel the reality in this way. This is some PlayStation VR, Sony uh, Computer Entertainment uh, has produced uh, uh, this technology and uh, it was uh, presented uh, at the Media Ambition Tokyo. And the individual VR experience, as you can see, is uh, presented on, uh, or shown on the screen, on the screen above and then the, 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 the sound is also shown. The syn uh, synesthesia the suit uh, it contains 25 uh, vibrators or actuators. Uh, not only vi it vibrates, uh, but also tactile sensor can be communicated, uh, bass or a drum or guitars. Uh, uh, the um, tactility it can be communicated. Therefore, with those 26 sensors on the suit, 
when the sound comes up, the drumming noise, uh, but in that case, uh, and the body of, uh, is going to be hit by this uh, the drum sound, and then rhythmic uh, sound uh, is going to be a semblance of sound. Then that comes, uh, you can feel that on the shoulder. And so in your lower body, drum, and then the cymbal uh, sound on the shoulder, and uh, they change on your body. And with that kind of experience, VR uh, is, uh, is the thing that uh, people can experience. And so the color and noise that can be used in order to tell what kind of sound uh, is released. And people uh, in the audience can also sense uh, the sound. Therefore, individual experience can be shared or transmitted by people in the audience. And this is uh, what we tried at the media admission in Tokyo. The VR uh, with the, uh, the Tokyo night scene on the back was just a fancy and cool. Tanigawa-san uh, and uh, his staff of the Tokyo Ambition um, Tokyo came up with this idea of doing this event in the evening. And so people got together in the evening, and there was a bar nearby. And so uh, with the drinks, people were able to enjoy this wonderful experience. At the end of the day, we would like and to release it as a commercial product. Uh, I think it was uh, just one year ago. It was on October 13th last year. So whether it is commercialized uh, or whether it is a prototype product, uh, but in a way, it was a very good experience uh, for us uh, to offer this kind of opportunity to people a year ago. This uh, anesthesia, uh, synesthesia the suit uh, uh, version is 2.0. Uh, it was two layer one, but now it is like this. If you're going to move, the light emits like this. It is difficult to see in, on the screen, and so the vibration areas are represented by different colors and lighting. Enhance and Rhizomatics and Kiyo Media Designs uh, team at uh, um, Keio University and those were the partners that worked together to produce this today. This kind of uh, synesthetic uh, uh, experience, for instance, now, how things are going to be installed in the city, that is a very important topic, and uh, we are now working on uh, different experiences, uh, audio-visual, uh, tactic, uh, uh, vibration, and physics, uh, they are all uh, put together in order to offer new experiences. Uh, they are not shown publicly yet. I'm sorry for this very small sound. Can you raise the volume? The, uh, the sound uh, serves as a trigger and all those uh, different technologies are combined together to give a different experience. And this kind of experiment is now being repeated. So it looks like uh, looking at the sound, for instance, Aesthetic uh, um, experience is also incorporated and if it is going and to construct it in a 3D format, then it is going and to be an object uh, that sometimes, sometimes look uh, messy. But what is interesting in this process is that uh, people will be able to get involved and experience it, who will share it on a worldwide scale, and you can publish it. So I think we are seeing the start of a new era, or an interesting era. I think, well, I was asked to give three keywords, and so uh, 
last evening uh, I worked on them and I experienced uh, sharing the experience that is for one thing a tangible and intangible fusion the things you can see and other things uh, you cannot see or things you can touch or cannot touch they are going to be fused in the future and uh, synesthesia is another term that I came up with now, with regard to the sharing of experience, uh, now 25 years have passed since the emergence of Internet. And I think uh, with the advent of the Internet, uh, many things have changed uh, compared to pre-Internet era. And you probably understand what has happened that uh, the objects uh, were uh, changed into um, smaller particles uh, and the networking uh, was done and uh, with, the, with that uh, the information has uh, penetrated, uh, uh, penetrated uh, uh, the world and the transmission of uh, data. And that has been, that has made some progress, but going forward, that we are going to see our experiences are going to be transmitted and shared with others, uh, and that such experiences uh, can also be published. As a result, and then synesthesia is going to uh, take a bigger role. Imaging uh, or uh, from uh, imaging era and to 3D scanning, and uh, we are making migration into that kind of a world. And as a result, there's going to be a fusion of passivity uh, and uh, positivity, uh, or the first uh, person or the third person. That is going to be a very interesting uh, thing that we have uh, to look into. Another thing is uh, the fusion of tangible and intangible. And the city itself is just beyond something you can see. Uh, there are tangible things, but there are going to be things and that are intangible, you can touch, or forms. In other words, a virtual world is going to be melted with intangible world. That would mean that things are going to go beyond time-space. For example, going beyond space, wherever you are, you are located, uh, living anywhere is going to be a message. Going beyond time, there is no reality at the moment, uh, but in the 30 or 50 years time, ba built on the, the things we are going to assume, uh, uh, accumulate, the people in the future will recognize uh, what they are. That is supposed to be part of the digital culture, but digital is not going to be used anymore. Now, the Ochiya was also talking about the digital nature. I think this, in this way, things are going to be melted. This is uh, a photo that was uploaded um, by my friend. Uh, his uh, father, when he traveled in Rome, sorry, in Rome, this was the photo that was taken then. And then my friend took the, uh, he picked another picture uh, in the same, at the same location. The father is gone, but in this way that he wrote a letter to his um, father at the same age and sending a message and to his uh, gone father. I think this is a very rich experience. This kind of thing uh, can be repeated, so going beyond time. I think I'm running out of time. Now, speaking of uh, synesthesia, uh, complex and complicated uh, sensory experience, and then innovative uh, and sense is going to be used as a filter. And uh, with this uh, filtering process uh, in place, people will be able to recognize uh, beauty, comfort, happiness, and love. And as a result, uh, that um, the euphoria is uh, going to prevail. And with that, I would like to conclude my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Uh, I work together with Mizuguchi san uh, in MAT in that space. Of race. Uh, we're looking at the, uh, the night scene of uh, Tokyo, and while watching the outside, we can feel the synesthesia where all the audience are able to concentrate what one person is looking at. I think it was weird. The air pressure is rather high here in this room, but it seems as though that the air pressure is rather low in that space. It was a, it was a kind of a futuristic live feeling. So for the first time, MAT, uh, Ms. Aki Inomata joined, and I would like to hand over to Inomata-san uh, for her presentation. Thank you very much. My name is Aki Inomata. I am making artworks and uh, I am doing co-production with living things. And many of the artworks we work together, I work together with living creatures. Um, in 2017, I participated in Media Ambition Tokyo. The artwork that I presented is connected what, to what we have talked about earlier, uh, going beyond time it was the theme of this work. Ammonite and octopus was put together. Ammonite and octopus actually share the same ancestor. So, of course, ammonite is already extinct. But the, we took the fossil of ammonite and we I, uh, we produced ammonite uh, using CT scanning, and it was given to octopus, and I watched what happened. I it seems as though that octopus really liked the ammonite, and he never let it go. And uh, this was shown, uh, the, the image was shown as well as the sculpture was shown. So that was the artwork that I showed at MIT. So in the past, it is said that the octopus used to have shells, but they uh, they abandoned it in the process of evolution. So when they're given something that could be used as a shell, octopus are very much likely to use it. I th it seems as though that uh, the living creatures like octopus use tools. I thought it was just human beings use tools. So. I felt uh, somewhat relevant. So octopus seems uh, to be defenseless, very soft, but yet can use tools. So octopus uh, have some similarities with human beings. So I am taking different approaches and to, in co-producing with living creatures. And um, with this, I worked with a dog, which is very close to human beings. What we did is we switched hair, my hair and dog's hair, and uh, we wore, we wore, I wore dog's hair, and my dog wore my hair. It seems like a very crazy idea, but in the uh, production process. The re I did a research on the relationship between dogs and human, and I heard I read the word uh, co-evolution. What is co-evolution? They, if there were no human beings, dogs remained as wolves. And on the other hand, if it weren't for dogs, uh, human beings were not able to develop its civilization as we have today. So um, they are uh, essential to each other. But what, looking up to what's happening today, I think there are various problems, uh, issues related to pet. Um, we are destroying the ecosystem in terms of dogs. There are standards uh, for dogs. And if dogs are outside those uh, uh, standards, uh, they are killed. So there are various problems. But having said that, sorry. So these problems are sorry. So uh, these problems are very difficult to solve. But I wanted to do something that would make dogs and human beings equals to each other. So. I would like to move on to the next work I did. The theme here is the bagworm. It's called Girl, Girl, Girl. And uh, this is a normal bagworm. Uh, they use uh, sticks and uh, dead leaves to come up with bags. And um, I think this uh, creation of bags is a technology uh, owned by bagworms. So, so I really wanted to intentionally call this process a technology. So this technology or the skills of creating bags is something I wanted to observe. That's how I started with this project. So what I did was I uh, cut into very small pieces the clothes of a woman, and I, I encouraged the bagworms to come up with their own bag. And this is how it worked out. It was much better than what I had expected. 
So I was uh, I was told that by the audience that uh, you must have made it yourself, but it's not true. It's actually this bagworm that created this bag. But I tried different inputs. I cut uh, different clothes into uh, very small pieces. In this case, I would like to show you later on how the bag was created. So this is very much like programming. Um, de depending on what your inputs are, the results or outcomes are different. And there are personalities or individuality de depending on the warm. So this is a part of the series that I've been working on for a long time. So what I do is I hand over shells to hermit crabs. So I create the shells for hermit crabs, and if they like it, uh, they would relocate to the shell that I created. So this is Aiton Bay Hub, this is Bangkok, and this is Santonini, and this is Etiantan in China, and this is Rahiskotab the parliamentary building in uh, Germany. This is Ricardo. Uh, this is Tokyo, by the way. So I shaped or reproduced different cities and uh, created shells. And uh, I encouraged hermit crabs to relocate from one shell to another. So um, I started this project in back in 2009. It's been going on for a while. Hermit crabs, I believe that you know, they relocate uh, because they grow. As they grow, they relocate to another shell, and then when they grow even bigger, they relocate to another crab, and under the shell. So when I was given the offer uh, for this exhibition, I thought the reason why I started this was um, uh, was because of an offer that was given by a uh, French embassy. In 2009, uh, French embassy uh, b land uh, was returned to the Jap to the to Japan, and 50 years later, I was told that the land uh, that used to be French territory then to Japanese territory will be returned to French France once again. I was it was shocking for me. It was just a piece of land and. Uh, the uh, that that piece of land could be changed from French territory to Japanese territory and then back to French territory once again and it's a kind of change of identity of the land so I'm doing things like this so I would like to explain how I make these so what I do is I take the shell I do the CT scanning x-ray a 3d version I collect data of the shells. Um, on top of that data, I use do the modeling using 3D C CD, and they are integrated. Uh, to, and I use the 3D printer to uh, output. And then I just give it to uh, the hermit crab. In many cases, they don't like it, and they're just abandoned. But sometimes, on rare occasions, the hermit crabs like the shell that I created, and they relocate to the shells. This is uh, how I'm doing the CT scanning. So this is another version of this project. Uh, the, this is a project that was done in the natural environment. And lastly, um, actually, I was in New York uh, till the beginning of this month. I just returned from New York. So I would like to talk about my experiences in New York. I was given a subsidy from Asia and Culture Council, ISCP New York, as they, uh, people call it. Residence artist, artist in residence is where I was. Artist in residence is where many artists uh, get together from different parts of the world uh, to live uh, to, uh, to hold uh, studios within one building where they can uh, exchange uh, with each other. The, this is just an example, but there were 38 artists. Uh, we were able. To, I was able to engage myself in different discussions with artists, and we go on a trip together with artists to different places. And I was given a studio in that building, and I was doing the production using that studio. So I was able to do open studios, do exhibitions, have people visit the studio. And, uh, and because of this, I was able to hold exhibitions outside as well. And it, uh, time passed really quickly. And I was also able to uh, give artist talk as well. So uh, while I was doing things like this, I went around to look to observe what's going on in the art scenes in New York. This is um, there are many art markets in New York. This is a gallery, and this is a, called uh, Queen's Museum. If you look carefully, you can see that there are so many people in the room. So um, they involve residents in the community. Uh, 
to uh, run, to operate the museum. It's part, it has become part of the community. It was something different. Uh, and huge uh, museums, Rio Beacon, and outside the museums, there are temporary uh, artwork uh, exhibitions. Temporary space was used to present different artworks. This is called Spring Break. I was able to see many things like this. Digital uh, artwork. This is a work that was done by Annie Kai, uh, attracting a lot of attention. This is done by Ian Chen. Using computer, uh, CG uh, images were generated using computer. So, and this is very analog. This is done by Yuji Agematsu, a Japanese artist. I don't think he's known in Japan, but he's attracting a lot of attention. In New York, all of the gums and all the dusts and all the rubbish he collected are being exhibited as artwork. Very shocking. So Uchida-san is in the picture. This is called Don't Follow the Wind. It's a Fukushima project. We were able to see it outside in New York. Able to, it's a VR project. Uh, New York sites, uh, I went to uh, look at different locations in New York. This is called New Lab, New Lab. Art, tech type. Startups are inside the New Lab. There are uh, several locations like this, and this is a university, it's called Pratt Uni Institute. Digital Fabrication Studio uh, was, uh, sites were found in New York. I think these are the kind of studios we have in Japan as well. And digital artists, as I mentioned earlier, uh, they have residence as well. It's called Pioneer Works, where artists get together. IBM is also popular. This is where people get together to have discussions. Artists uh, do production, and also they hold events. And also public art was also very popular in New York. I got to see them a lot, done by Jeff Queens in the Rock in Rockefeller Center. This is made of huge balloon. And this is by, done by Anish Kakwa. Seto Uchi's swirling tides uh, were the start of uh, the ideas. And uh, it's a huge installation where, where water was being swirled into the center. So I, I wonder how much it costed. This is not permanent. This is just a temporary installation. I was very impressed to see such a huge uh, installation. And this is done by Nari Word in the park. Uh, the curators uh, continuously uh, work to uh, bring different artworks into the, the public space. So um, the artwork change uh, one after another. And uh, I thought this was somewhat new. So I have a blog, or I have uh, uh, I wrote um, um, about my experiences in New York on a site called uh, Mine. Please take a look at it if you have time. And I went to watch horseshoe crab. In New York, if you go to the coast, actually it's very rich in nature. And the difference between New York and Tokyo is that Tokyo is, in Tokyo, there is a clear separation between nature and the city. But in the case of New York, it seems as though that if you just go outside a little bit to the suburbs, you're able to enjoy nature. I think that's a huge difference between the two cities. So I was very impressed to see a horse to crab like this in New York. Because of my uh, stay in New York, I am holding an exhibition in Chicago right now. It's called Coming of the Age. So it's, it's now on. So if you have any opportunities to visit Chicago, please take a look. Thank you very much. Thank you. I want to know the result uh, of the art piece that you worked on together with your dog. Thank you, Ms. Inomoto. Now, Mr. Tagawa, over to you. Good morning. My name is uh, Takura, CEO of Takron. A self-introduction, uh, a brief one. And then I would like um, to touch upon media art related uh, topics. Takron is the name of the company. 
uh, the, num the size of the employees is, uh, is uh, 40 in Tokyo and London are the two locations uh, technology and design plus uh, design I'm going to share with you some of our projects uh, basically working together with the e companies uh, we produce some pro different kinds of uh, products probably you will not find any innovation out of, uh, of the something came back to uh, look very serious out of uh, my uh, what pieces I'm going to introduce? Uh, about 20% of my work is dedicated and to working together with the young uh, students. I'm also engaged in teaching. Uh, Royal Art of the College. It is a graduate school located in London. I serve as a visiting scholar. Design, innovation, uh, engineering uh, is the topic uh, that uh, they are working on. And tech school and design school are working together in order to offer a uh, master degree course. Uh, about 80 of them are coming from 40 countries. Uh, one third uh, uh, the background engineering, one third, uh, and the rest, one third, UK, EU, and the rest. And there are so there are nine groups in total in order and to guarantee the diversity of the cost. Create looking at the creative scene in Tokyo, I feel uncomfortable with the scene as a matter of fact that this is uh, somewhat too monocultural. Cool Japan is the catchword uh, Japan often uses, but the one single language uh, or uh, monotonous uh, culture and it is a high context, a high culture, environment, and a culinary, a tradition, a pop culture coming out from this kind of homogeneous culture. Now, speaking of innovation for society, diversity is uh, more is, uh, is, is, is essential. Therefore, in starting this year, uh, working together with the Royal College of Art and the Institute of Industrial Science of Tokyo University, uh, together with them, we set up the design lab, multi-language, multi-cultural -back background, and post-master program is being offered. Now, those who have completed the master's course uh, and those uh, in the doctoral course are combined together and to offer a three-month course, in particular biotech or information tech that do exist uh, at the Tokyo University and on top of it the uh, space technology. They are combined together and to for the purpose of a prototyping and the visualization. This was this kicked off for this year and uh, Murray, Bill, Murray Building can support us in providing us a venue for presentations. This project is going to be made uh, bigger starting next year. The leader uh, of uh, this project uh, is, uh, has, uh, has been transferred into uh, this uh, lab and the Sputnik-san is also coming to, uh, come to this uh, school starting next year and I'm going to be part of the support team. Now, artwork pieces. Tanigawa-san uh, introduced uh, this uh, visualization, software-based. It is uh, um, disclosed uh, on, the webs, on the web. Now, big word is a familiar term for all of you. Uh, there is a big data. And for example, the, the big data serve as natural resources. They have to be refined, uh, uh, in refined, and for sophistication. Uh, that you can't do anything only with natural resources. AI and analytics uh, is uh, one of the approach to be apply applied. That is the mainstream approach of uh, statistics, art, and design, intuition, uh, and uh, insightfulness. That kind of uh, a right and brain approach can also be adopted, and as a result, the data visualization is one of the results of such efforts. Starting three years ago, Resus is a big data platform supported by the government, and we have been involved in the development of this system. And uh, you can see those uh, barns in 2015 and 2050. 
uh, that the 500 meter mesh uh, is used in order to compare uh, the rhymes at uh, the increase and decrease of population. And this uh, kind of information uh, can be used in order to analyze uh, where the appropriate locations of hospitals and schools, for example, the Twitters, uh, tweets, and they are combined together uh, in the order of a million English and Spanish and the other languages. Uh, they were uh, the different colors are used in order to characterize them and how they are interrelated with the cityscape or the city situation. You can see white dots uh, in the slide, and these ones are white dots. The, the native language and data, uh, native languages uh, that are owned by Max Planck Institute, this is as well, uh, so they are meshed up. So looking at the global situation, the number of uh, tweets, uh, if you have uh, more tweets, this white dots disappear. Therefore, uh, there is the diversity of languages being wiped out uh, by the advancement uh, in tweets. Uh, this is the, the real flight uh, visualizer. Uh, you can see all the data of uh, the aircraft in service, and you can tell how the sky in the United States is well densely networked uh, with the rest of the world. And the government people and the company people will be able to look at this kind of a data. And then, the, instead of the 2D uh, data, uh, people will be able um, to get this kind of a 3D visualization to think about the future direction to take. The next topic. Hakto's Lunar Exploration Rover has been developed with a fully optimized design to achieve the mission. Launching the rover costs more than $1 million per kilogram. Therefore, mass is an important consideration. Hakto has developed an ultra-compact and lightweight rover. The rover includes various commercial products for weight and cost reduction, all of which have passed environmental testing for space. Communication is the lifeline of the mission. Hakto's hybrid communication system enables both long-distance and high-speed communication. It is carefully designed to adapt to pocket loss and delays. Carbon fiber is used to construct the body of the rover. To withstand the enormous vibration of a rocket launch, its light structure is reinforced with three-dimensional curved surfaces. Solar cells have been placed on each side of the rover, arranged into a minimum area to avoid interference with other components. Mounted at a 70-degree angle, they maximize the amount of solar power generation. It adapts to a temperature range from minus 40 to 100 degrees Celsius. It is coated with silver and teflon that reflect most sunlight and allows heat to be radiated into space. The top panel is thermally insulated by an Alton resin spacer with low thermal conductivity. The electronics are mounted directly to magnesium heat sinks on the top panel to radiate its heat. The lunar surface is covered with regolith, a fine powdered sand. The rover can drive stably even when it is on a slope or turning with anti-skid wheels. And the link structure reliably supports the rover. It also detects obstacles with an infrared sensor. Four cameras capture high-definition images in 360 degrees, which are transmitted to Earth with data compression technology. The cameras also detect the driving condition. To meet the challenges, Hakto has applied intensive problem-solving, using its multidisciplinary expertise to deliver a high-quality design solution. Overcoming extreme environmental factors the team looks forward to completing the mission. This project is named Hakuto, and it is led by Hakuto team. The Google Luna X Prize this year, toward the end of this year, 
rover is going to be launched and the 500 meters is going to be the distance on the surface of the moon and high definition photos are going to be communicated to the earth and 25 million dollars will be paid as prize. This is a competition, international competition. There are different teams that join this com competition and there are uh, five um, the finalists. Uh, now one of them is a Japanese team. Uh, it is called the Hakuto. Uh, it is a joint venture team and a, a company that is involved. And then the body design and the construction is the area we are working on as part of the team. On Christmas Day, it is going to be launched and we are looking and for uh, taking uh, the first prize. Uh, I hope that it is going to be a, uh, the um, report by TV, so I hope that you will be able to offer support. This is the last uh, video. ...pushed to its limit. But what if we could bypass all the congestion through a personalized door-to-door -door delivery experience? Yeah, that sounds great. Get in, get to my destination, and, and get out. Well, one company, Movil, has an outside-the-box idea that could put people inside the box and change the way we move forever. Movil's personalized mobility unit is a private economy travel compartment equipped with amenities such as Wi-Fi, charging station, air conditioning, desk, and safety features, as well as compartments for groups and even a comfortable sleek sleeper option. A movable transport pod is a very exciting new product, but then again, it's really a natural evolution of the service portfolio of Movil. So we offer on-demand urban mobility in a one-stop shop. Instant gratification has become part of our mindset because the technology you know, in these devices has just given us access to everything we want when we want it. To use the personal transport pod, a person selects a pickup and a drop-off location from a mobile device. The pod is promptly delivered, and away we go. Fancy. It meditates. Got AC, lights, toilet. That's important. I love this. So I feel like I could do my work here. It's nice that the seats are like really big. Well, I, I like that I can stretch my legs all the way out. I don't know about a dance party, but... Hey, hey. During a journey, people stay connected, productive, and comfortable inside the confines of the pod. It's that compact experience people like Emmy Avanesian, owner of the 100 square foot pygmy hippo shop in Los Angeles. You can see uh, how they do not have uh, realistic and uh, speculative design or critical design is a part of uh, the work that is involved. For example, if a human body or human being is to be transported uh, in this kind of way, that the movil uh, is a research lab, and Takram was also uh, involved. And the human trafficking sound of transportation, it sounds like a very uh, unlawful uh, act. Uh, but uh, it could be a possibility uh, that uh, we can use the public transportation in order for the purpose for the purpose of uh, um, move, move, moving around. If this going to be such a, a box, and then if you can move around, then you can eat, you can work, and you can sleep inside the box. And you can go to Paris or from Tokyo, and this is going to be delivered in the first place to your house. And if you push uh, the start button, then you will. Uh, you will get to the destination. This is uh, a funny story. The si speaking of science fiction, there are going to be two or three lines uh, included uh, in, the, in the science based on story. 
and physics or social science, um, all those uh, things are going to be compatible, the information will be compatible with uh, such a science, but two or three are going to go against them. This is the science fiction. And then design fiction is similar to that. Uh, two or three errors or lines are going to be incorporated in order to do some kind of simulation of the society. So this is a case relating to trans public transportation. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. When we started MIT, what I was thinking about was that if you can think of a book, when you know what you would like to read, you use e-commerce, you just push enter, and if it's quick, you are able to receive the book by the end of the day. If you know what you want to read, you would like to take such a convenient method. But there are times when you think that I would like to read a book. So at that time, you would go to a book sh bookstore and then try to walk around the shelves where you uh, where the books of us uh, that cover uh, uh, topics that you're interested in uh, are there. But the same thing, and and you would start thinking the what you would like to read. So input is not decided by your own intention alone. You're impacted by other people, or you get influenced by others, and. Uh, the borderline is very vague, and they try to merge different things. So what I wanted to, do, to create was to create a platform that would enable that. So I was asked questions many times from people, such as, um, how are you doing the curation? Our concept is not, this is not an art exhibition, so there is no curation. So what is the methodology is also another question I was often asked. It's based on recommendation. Who recommends? It's actually, um, we ask people in the community who are doing something interesting to recommend someone. That's how the event was uh, was uh, established. So basically, interesting people who are recommended by interesting people uh, come to do different things in the event. So. So people who do recommendations, I would say, are already uh, major uh, players in the community, so they are actively going outside. So we are running a project for called Team Lab. What they do is they just uh, open up their uh, office and uh, have people come to that office to work as uh, one-day employees. and. Uh, Many players are dedicating themselves to do uh, uh, workshops. So people who are already famous, already known in the community, they go outside. But these people will be recommending the people they find interesting. So these are the people that we would like to bring into our MIT. So it's a kind of reference type of system. How, And uh, using that system, we have been able to expand our event. So we are working together with different programs, uh, trying to connect new things, different things. And the methodology uh, we try to uh, identify. And uh, basically, uh, we try to do what we would like to do, uh, something that we, we would like to come up with a platform where we'll be able to communicate what we would like to communicate instead of focusing on commercial things. So this time around, we are going to do uh, the sixth event. So timekeeping went uh, fairly well. So um, a little bit uh, behind schedule, but um, it's not too bad. So we would like to move on to the second part of our session. So if you can switch to my PC. So uh, Mr. Mizuguchi already talked about his keywords. So these are the uh, keywords that uh, all of the speakers came up with. The keywords that each of us is interested in, uh, sharing of experiences next to it, art scenes in New York and Tokyo, also synthesia, also time difference, uh, creative circulation, in, in fusion between uh, intangible and tangible, a new connect, individual, individual changes and exchange of identity, diversity, creative collision, and the imagineering. 
So there is a total number of 12 keywords which are already uh, on the screen, which are give, uh, presented by uh, the four people sitting in front of you. So I would like to get the audience involved in this session. So it doesn't really have to be QA session. I would like someone to pick a keyword for our discussions. So anybody at all, please choose a keyword. And the person who presented the keyword would first of all explain uh, about the keyword. And then other speakers would respond to uh, that uh, to the keyboard. So I will be the timekeeper, and so when the time comes, you will see hear a sound, a beep, and that's when the discussion will end, on that keyword will end. That's how it's going to proceed. Any volunteers? Um, any keyword that you would like us to discuss? Identity. Change and exchange of the identity. Wow, that's a difficult keyword. Thank you very much for choosing that keyword. Who came up with that keyword? You know, san can you explain? And that's how we're going to start. It's going to last for 15 minutes. So um, the theme of my hermit crab project is this. So I started with the French embassy, but the piece of land who, who, what's, who is the, the owner of the land, the territory? It, uh, the, it, it converts from French territory to Japanese territory. And for example, uh, uh, we are Japanese, but the nationality may be changed. And uh, other than that, I am trying to keep my identity, but I feel that identity could also be changed. That's something that I have been thinking. But maybe I should be connecting this keyword with diversity. So I think so changing with myself, uh, going to New York and so on. So I would like to ask uh, other panelists to share their ideas. So Tagawa-san, uh, we were talking uh, before this session what percentage of your uh, life is in New London and what percentage in Tokyo? So what, any domain in terms of identity? Identity, the word itself. I think we should forget that word. What, how do you, what kind of standards are being used by who to identify who you are? So we talked about uh, brand identity. When you say Uniqlo, you come up with the idea of uh, Uniqlo. But individuals are not as simple as that. I think um, I think uh, Mizuguchi-san would feel relevant. But the fact that you exist and uh, that existence is uh, causing something to happen. I think there's a clear separation between the two, the space, existence, value, contribution. Now that we have the internet, <coughs> by the way, I came with a similar kind of keyword, individual and individual. Identity and individual, uh, they are close to each other. But when you say individual, that's individual, which means that it's impossible to divide. So individual is something that you cannot divide any further. So there is an ongoing general election, but the idea of individual came uh, from uh, voting rights and so on, and the French Revolution and so on, when we divided the community into different small pieces, you come up with the smallest unit, and that is when the idea of individual came up. And the idea, the idea or the concept of identity came up quite recently. In the past, people talked about uh, families and community. Mizuguchi-san, you have been producing games. In the games, identity of the players do exist. And the person who is playing, the player's identity, they are not the same. No, not at all. That is what's interesting uh, about uh, the games. 
There are many communities. SNS is the same thing. Being anonymous, anonymity, and things without that. And I think it's completely different. So listening to uh, Tagawa-san, I was I completely agree. It's, it's how I am today. When I see the word identity, uh, when I saw that word identity, I remember something. When I was a teenager, I went around uh, the American continent by car. There was no internet, there were no cell phones. But I was given a credit card. Uh, credit cards did exist back at that time. In Chicago, in Chinatown, my car uh, got stuck in the snow. and. I was going to be killed because I was surrounded by many um, black people, but they helped me, and uh, I was really impressed. And three days later, when I arrived in New York, I went out to uh, have food. My, the, the windows of the car were broken, and my passport was stolen. And me, as a teenager, I wasn't attacked in Chicago, but the fear that I felt uh, when I found out that I, sto I had lost my lo passport was much bigger because I was scared and I stayed at the hotel not able, not being able to go out for, uh, for about three days because I felt a sense of loss, having lost my passport, losing my identity. What I would like to say by, uh, by this uh, is that uh, uh, we are now in kind of a free status. Uh, we are now already being liberated. Uh, so we can talk easily about those things. Now, including that kind of um, thing, how do we, how, what kind of approach uh, do we take on this kind of topic as an issue? We have to free ourselves, uh, definitely. Before internet and after net, uh, that is a big issue. Now, before the advent of internet and after the advent of internet, whether the, the value, whether connection is changed completely or not, I do believe that there is a huge change. And looking at this screen, you can tell that in London, in New York, you can feel close to those uh, cities, and Tokyo and you are there far apart on the, other, on the other side, on the other hand. So physical distance, uh, for one thing, and the distance uh, beyond time space, and that is a different thing. Internet has enabled us to do that. And the Skype for another, you have to get used to it, um, but if you're going to see progress uh, in Skype technology, you will feel closer to each other uh, like real persons, uh, even if you are uh, stay apart. And uh, Tokyo and uh, London, I think uh, 20% in London and uh, the rest uh, in Tokyo. Uh, that is uh, how my time separation is done. But uh, one third uh, of myself, uh, sometimes I feel that I stay in London. So I think that kind of a sense uh, is uh, something you always uh, um, have on the day to day basis, aside from the physical situation. Well, if you were immersed uh, in VR, you will be able to free yourself uh, from many limitations. So, whether you are located and who you are, and uh, the same thing can be said about the city environment. And so, each individual is a layer, and then there are contradictions inside. Then, as a whole, there is a no breakup. Uh, of uh, the, 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 the disruption itself. Uh, I think uh, when it comes to the internet, that is okay, um, but uh, the city is not yet, uh, has not yet reached that stage. Uh, therefore, it is difficult at the moment uh, to the full freedom. But uh, to the individual level, I think uh, that is almost achieved, uh, for example, that all the people probably have a cell phone. So 30 years ago, there was no cell phone, and it was the age of facsimile. And uh, well, uh, I think each household uh, had the facsimile in the past, uh, but not anymore. So every 10 years, the channels of communication and the connection have changed. 
uh, no, the cell phone is a one tool to connect our cells, but the methodology is different. For example, line is one tool, but in Europe, uh, WhatsApp uh, may be the tool or a messenger. In other cases, and short mail. And uh, I think um, I, I think uh, there are uh, not many occasions uh, in which you use a cell phone. You use the phone. There are different channels that we can approach. A line could be one too, or a mail would be another. I was talking with Mizuguchi just side with you that, uh, that the way to create the company has completely changed because it is basically project-based. Uh, each individual get together to form a project team, and there is no problem in that pro process. We are free to from any location in one sense, and then. Ident similar, similar thing can be said about identity. And depending on the environment, the technology, we can make a change. We will be able um, to enhance our new our capability. It, it, it may sound similar to telepathy because, for example, Skype-based uh, communication is prevalent. Uh, and then on the opposite side, uh, there are uh, those, uh, the, uh, the, uh, for example, Americans and uh, the UK. But you can easily get tuned uh, with, the, uh, um, with, with the communication. I think uh, life hack uh, uh, hints uh, was uh, told to me by a friend that Skype camera, an office uh, uh, the scene is to be captured, uh, and that should be avoided. And then you can feel more connected. Uh, each uh, individual PC uh, captures the individual, uh, individual faces. And for example, that uh, Tokyo and New York, that kind of distance uh, can be eliminated if you just, just see uh, the participants and faces on the PC. I think that is similar, that the same with the, uh, uh, the communication in the physical uh, world. If, you, that, uh, if it is going to be a round table, that uh, you will be able to see everyone's face. Therefore, uh, people are encouraged to go into the discussion. So it is better uh, for people and to have a better communication at the round table instead of a square table. Uh, because, uh, yeah, and then in the case of a square table, you can see what, um, what the person next to you is doing. And so, whether it is uh, the round table communication or square table uh, communication, there is a difference. I think uh, there are different ways um, to have um, communication, different communications in, uh, simultaneously. I think the connection at the workplace or the connection in the private life uh, they differ. Uh, I have uh, my own version interpretation of identity of Tani Galasan, but uh, they, they, it is different uh, from others. There may be contradiction, uh, but you know here in the Japanese uh, uh, culture, uh, that uh, it is, uh, there is a um, moral inhibition that um, you should not uh, show different faces to different people. But instead, and I think that kind of um, approach may be more viable uh, in the uh, internet age, uh, which encourages empathy. Therefore, whether you are going to replace your whole body or part of your body, uh, that is also going to be very important in the process of communication. <laughs> <laughs> or part of the body is to be replaced, uh, for example, the replacing your uh, hair with the dog's hair. I think uh, if um, the, your dog loves you and you love your dog and that kind of relationship is established, uh, that is a wonderful relationship. Uh, there is a one uh, friend of mine that, uh, who uh, lost a kidney 
uh, and the wife's a kidney was transplanted. And that was a wonderful story. And uh, it was a, with the, it is a kind of a story of engagement or a connection. And that is a surprising um, area. Uh, in every, everywhere and elsewhere in the world, um, whether it is physical or not physical, there is a progression of a connection. Uh, when I had a talk with the Professor Yuane of Tokyo University, he mentioned, he said, that the whole, everything is going to be transferred and to the VR. He started to talk, he, he said that the eye would be changed into a, a glass. Now, there is a communication with the human beings, uh, but if there, there is a glass uh, in the virtual reality, then probably you don't uh, think myself a human being. So those visionaries' uh, mindset and worldview is completely different. You can easily switch yourself into a dog in such a world. In the past, about 10 years ago, there was a fun story, like a kind of a joke, and several people, a man, uh, were uh, have, uh, conversing uh, uh, with each other. Uh, for example, uh, the story about translation uh, of, uh, uh, for example, Heinz and Heinz, and it is supposed to be a future story, and one of them said that, that the brain is replaced, and all of a sudden the conversation stopped there. And that could be a feasible story, so far as I'm concerned. What is it? So, human beings, uh, when they are, when their brains are overhauled and replaced, uh, and then on that occasion, you will be puzzled, uh, confused, and I think uh, that is related to identity, George. The bell has rung. <laughs> it's time to stop here. Thank you. Next topic. Anyone? Please. Synesthesia. Synesthesia. Allow me to show you another slide. Synesthesia. It is an old term, as a matter of fact. In the past, the Bauhaus artists often used this about 100 years ago. Kandinsky, for example. So, sound inspiration was used in, for painting. Well, all the way back into the ancient Greek and the Roman Empire, among the creators and artists. And I think this kind of a concept is something very common and uh, unusual. Uh, in the original, there was a multimodal one. It is not just a visual or a word, uh, something that is uh, more blurry. And in the case of the process of output, it can be translated into visual or, uh, or um, the audio and, and into words, uh, into literature, for example. And so they developed uh, separately from each other because that was the only way. But going forward, it could be integrated. Uh, we have a technology to do so. On such occasion, in such a, on such occasion, there's going to be that is going to be the time for a great paradigm sh shift. So finally. This kind of experience, the experience uh, or the feeling uh, can be enriched uh, with the support of synesthesia. There are different uh, environments in which we can talk about the synesthesia. Most recently, uh, for example, the language is subject to change and transfer transformations, or the language barrier uh, served as a is, uh, as uh, as uniqueness unto specific uh, 
um, group of people, so they were separated. Uh, but uh, Google has uh, come up uh, with the translation unit uh, at the price of uh, 15,000 yen. And so in real time, the translation is uh, trans uh, real time. The people uh, can, the, the, it, it, the language can be translated uh, into another language. In this kind of a direct communication made possible, I think it is going to be a further trans transformation that can uh, be achieved. Uh, in New York, uh, for example, I think you were there for about three months, right? Four months, and I came back and then went back to New York. Of course, in New York, people, people don't just speak English. There are people from different parts of the world, and you're kind of living in the same building together with these people. Of course, there are times when you're sharing your work, but sometimes you greet these people saying, good morning, you're kind of living together with them. And uh, each of us, each of them are trying to pursue something, trying to create something. Uh, what kind of vibration did you feel there? Uh, it was very first time for me to experience uh, working together with people with different backbones. I w it was very first time for me to talk with people uh, from uh, conflict areas such as uh, Palestine. So I felt that in Japan you have a pressure of, of, of being the same. Uh, it, I have a feeling uh, that in Japan you are kind of obliged to feel the same way with, uh, with others. And I, I didn't have that kind of feeling anymore in New York. So the feeling of the people with different backbones. I think it's complete, it's difficult to do it, uh, to understand it completely, but I had a strong will to try to understand. So sometimes I was asked questions about the uniqueness of Japan and so on. So I felt something quite opposite from synesthesia, um, trying, you know, understanding the fact that we are not able to understand each other. Synesthesia, once it's fully penetrated, are you, you're no, no longer conscious about it? Is it something that you feel you can feel unconscious about i have been uh, there's been a lot of discussions on ai yesterday but as the technology evolves to replace the abilities or capability of the human beings what's left with us i think this probably is something that will be left so inomada san just talked about um, uh, what she just mentioned is probably is a proof that we have not reached to this point. People from Israel and people from uh, Palestine, when they are playing uh, Mario, and if they are having fun, I'm sure that they have the, exactly the same expression. So a boy from Palestine and an old man from uh, Israel, they are playing the same game. And, they, and if you uh, watch their faces behind the wall, you see that they have the same expression. But once it's over, you would suddenly notice something. So this kind of wall that exists uh, can be broken with the power of art. So, having the wall gone, melted, of course, uh, the world will be more peaceful. But religious things, uh, the faith and uh, belief, beliefs are, are different. But um, we talk about um, the art is essential for the evolution of cities, but art and entertainment is something that would appeal directly to that person. It's nothing logical. Once uh, once you know you like it, whether you like it or not, it's, there is a kind of instant chemistry. Uh, I think it's a device. But when, so synesthesia uh, to be expanded or uh, city culture, well, Tokyo is now being diversified. So I think... Um, I think there will be increasing number of uh, kind of symbols that will connect people. What do you think, Tagawa-san? I think uh, this is a matter of where to draw a borderline of um, writing. It's 
dangerous to mix. So whether it's going, it's not just uh, two options. It's difficult to uh, put together. It shouldn't be put together. It should be put together. I'm sure that there are things that should stay independent and others that could be mixed. Which category is to the right? Which category should be placed on the left? So if we can talk about things like that, I think that would be very interesting. Synesthesia is directly connected to people's senses and so on, so therefore it's very university, uh, universal. So it's more fundamental than religion. So this is something that could be shared as a homo sapiens, so therefore uh, could be uh, put together as a technology, as a language. Those of you who are going to uh, English conversation schools, I think they should stop. So I think you should learn the technique of of speaking AI language in Japanese. Japanese people, uh, the automatic translation of AI, because of the tool, uh, Japanese people will be able to find out that the world is such a diverse place. So that's the kind of information that it's hard for us, which is hard for us to get. But so. Um, so if you learn English, you will be able to learn diversity, but I'm not really sure you don't. I, I don't feel that way. It's through the communication you are understand the language, but you are surprised with the food that you eat or you get a culture backgrounds is quite different from languages. So being surprised with the way of thinking of another person or being surprised that people take shoes off at s somewhere. So the visualization that I showed you, uh, it's kind of saddening if you see it. Twitter, Twitter is a phenomena, but as we see penetration, wider penetration of internet technology, the local culture is now being wiped out. But language can be different because a technology will be there to solve that problem. People in Tibet will uh, will be able to survive speaking their lo local language. So human culture, uh, uh, with human culture, I think we will be able to uh, maintain diversity that, with that approach. New things can happen with uh, two things. One that could be uh, that would happen in where uh, different types of people get together to find new things or would occur in places where it's uh, extremely remote. So that is only when uh, diversity would occur. The Because of the automatic translation system, diversity can be secured. It could be, uh, if, if, if things go towards that direction, I think it would be very interesting. Space-wise, uh, there is a progress of localization. If the more unique your origin is in diversity, a diverse world, it will be uh, more characterized. So if it's standardized, it wouldn't go that way. So New York, London, Paris, Tokyo, of course there are differences between those cities, but if you uh, look Oh, 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 from far away, there are similarities. There are maisons, there are museums. If you can go back to the first page. Yeah. Mizuki-san, you were going to say something? Listening to your talk, I was uh, feeling something quite opposite. Being impressed with something, being, having, uh, mo being moved by something. It's not something that's simple, or that's, it's not, it doesn't come from one single factor. It's something more uh, comprehensive. So if you're looking at the image, it's better to have the sound that would improve, that increase the way that would impress people. Uh, it could be tactual sense, or it could be data. So all of these, when all of this are mixed to create a kind of mess that would, uh, move other people's, um, uh, would have more ability to move people's emotions. So, tur turning on the switch of imagination would be possible with that approach. The word synesthesia 
Uh, it just happened to be that above that it has the time, the, word, the keywords time difference and uh, share experiences. Synesthesia is, is something uh, invisible, but through our different activities, this is something happened recently. If you contact someone, the person was actually in Europe and it was during the night, it was uh, midnight. That happens a lot these days. So um, little by little, you. Uh, you start to check where the person is with you using Instagram. Well, that person is in Japan now, so or that person is uh, in Europe. So it's it's no good idea to call that person today. So emails. Uh, when you try to contact the person, sending emails and so on. So uh, time, it seems uh, on, on the one hand, we feel that the world is getting smaller. But uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, there is a gap of um, having a feeling that uh, Tokyo and Iwate Prefecture are far, far away. So there will be different ways of connecting with each other. So we are trying to get used to it, and we have to be familiar with that. If not, we won't be able to digest. So that is the generation we are in. But the children who are not here today would go beyond that. They will find or design new ways of communicating, completely different from the way we communicate today. With time difference uh, is the term I came up with. Well, in the past, uh, how, how were they living uh, in 100 years' time? Now, there's going to be a issue of time difference uh, because uh, people are living in a different timeline, uh, for example, in London and in Tokyo. There are things and technologies that can give solution them too. When it comes into those issues, the is Earth, the is uh, the solar system. Now, when it comes to transportation, that uh, aircraft will be able um, to be a tool and technology in this way can be employed. Uh, but um, the biggest uh, issue that is, uh, that is uh, posed uh, by the solar system is time difference. Now, what, how, what kind of uh, people are going and to challenge this uh, daunting task? But I think uh, the, someone is going to take up this uh, challenge as an issue to be addressed. Now, Japan is going to face depopulation in the future. Now turning to Southeast Asia or India, and when I interact with them, and there should be a huge dome to be constructed, and 10,000 people will be able to live inside. It is an FS kind of story. And the sunlight is going to be prevented, and the artificial sun is going, sunlight is going to be provided, and there will be schools, hospitals, and shopping centers, and people who are living inside. And then, uh, for example, 10,000 people are going to be hired, and there will be virtual uh, migration or immigration. And I think that could be possible. Now, in that, the environment, 10,000 people are living, uh, there are going to be a mental issue that may break out. Uh, but uh, from the viewpoint uh, of uh, a thought uh, process, uh, we can create about 100 locations of uh, such signs. Then we don't have um, to bring in people outside, and that kind of uh, technology uh, of eliminating time difference uh, can be employed. A uh, time difference uh, or the jet lag uh, uh, will be generated uh, when you get to the destination. Uh, and so if something is done on that aspect, uh, the big issue that we consider at the moment uh, may be eliminated, and one of such problems is time difference. Within Japan, we can create an American village and that uh, um, they use the American time and then the people living in that environment that live the American time. And it's similar to the French embassy that uh, Inomoto-san was talking about. The location and the time is being linked at the moment, and they, they are unbundled and reconnected, and then this issue is going to be solved from a different angle.
I think 15 minutes have already passed. It was a very interesting time, so I didn't uh, cut it. Now, we still have 15 minutes to come. We are going to have a QA session for 10 minutes, and this is my idea. Therefore, we only have five minutes for this free discussion. But maybe we can pick up another uh, topic uh, for the remaining five, five minutes, please. Good morning. In 2030, uh, the objectives are going into be the central issue. Optic zone could be a place um, for holding um, the World Cup uh, like in 2030 or 2040. There is no time difference on the polar area. We are living in this kind of a climate and situation. Therefore, we've been having a problem with the time difference. So things are going to be completely changed on the polar area or migrating into the space. Uh, our mindset uh, is not uh, planetary. We should have a mindset that we are living on the sphere. Now, the synesthesia, uh, synesthesia, we are not uh, living truly on the language of, for example, sakura, cherry blossoms. We consider it to just define it as a noun. And Sa represents a deity in the, in the mountain, and then Saori, it means a or coming down from the top of the mountain. And the transit area uh, is defined as Sakura. I'm not talking about uh, ontology. That when we way back in, in the ancient time, that we had the experience of synthesia when we utter this word, uh, but we are contaminated uh, by other uh, characters, uh, such as Chinese characters, but we have been successful uh, in visualizing the letters, uh, but instead that we have uh, lost the, uh, the, the freedom uh, of um, uh, experience in synthesis, yeah. uh, but when it comes to, to AI, if there's going to be a support uh, from such a function, that we can return to analog situation to live in freedom with the support of synesthesia. So language and synesthesia going forward, AI with the AI support, we will have more freedom to live freely. Uh, Professor Takemura is a guest speaker, so to speak. We are the ones, so we would like to listen to his um, presentation. Uh, we are really into his, uh, his uh, presentation. Having listened to, um, to the professor's speech, how to construct the things, it is going to be subject to change in the future. And today, now we are sitting on this side and are facing the audience, so our locations are separated. However, as um, Professor Takemura mentioned in response to his presentation, and that would be a trigger uh, for uh, the discussion. And in this way, uh, the different comments are going to be mingled together and combined together to create this something new. We evolve the discussion into something new, and a new chemistry is going to be generated in the process. So the process or the process of the connection, we have many things that we have lost sight of. Uh, then, then those elements can be reconnected to regenerate to something new, and I think that is something we can expect in the future. So a new process can be can be pro created, and I would like and to invite each of you to talk about this process design, the work style, uh, or in order to create something new. You may have um, some ideas about the process or methodology, new 
editing okay. policy that you may come up with. Tagasan. How should I say? Individual. There are different layers and distributed layers. If society can guarantee them, then that the, all those individuals as particles that can be reconnected and uh, through reconnection there's going to be an opportunity for creating something new. So cities and systems, they were built um, without that kind of uh, knowledge. Therefore, when it comes into when it comes to our job, uh, there are a lot of blue chip companies and the very competent uh, mechanical engineers, and they are only working for one single company over three thirty years. He is a genius, but he doesn't come out of the company never. But in case such a person can spend 20% of their time into a venture, tech venture, then that would create a very interesting environment. Now, I was uh, talking about the story of uh, Rover, and that company it had uh, only 20 employees. They were pro bono, uh, the volunteers, and they came over to the company for their voluntary uh, research. That is uh, because uh, there was a, uh, an obligation or the rule that uh, those engineers uh, would not be able to work uh, for other purposes. In Japan, there's going to be the process of depopulation. So I think it is better for us uh, to, uh, to stop counting one employee as one employee, but instead with two or three employees. For example, in the case of Mizuguchi, Mizuguchi-san will be able to be committed and to other work and some, uh, some uh, compensation uh, from those sources, then in that case, we don't define him as one person, but instead of two or three, uh, because uh, it is possible that their work can, his work can be empowered by internet. And so it is supposed um, to uh, be uh, the uh, nominal uh, number uh, of uh, employees. Uh, can be uh, increased. Uh, therefore, the process needs to be changed uh, fundamentally for that to be achieved. I completely agree. Yes, uh, being able to uh, quantize, because uh, it's possible to divide into small pieces, there is higher efficiency, and uh, if you don't want to work, you will reduce yourself to 0 0.5, turn yourself off 50%, but if you are motivated, and if you feel strong, uh, you can uh, count yourself as full. And um, if you are able to freely make uh, choices like that, that would be nice. So. We are trying to, uh, peop the companies who are trying to do it, um, they are, uh, in companies, there is a system where people are not allowed to work after 10, even if you are really motivated. One of my friends did this. Uh, they, uh, he fired everybody, all of the employees, and uh, we hired them once again as as uh, uh, self-employed employees and encourage them to work as much as they can because uh, because they are self-employed and they do, the company does not have to comply with the labor-related laws. So being able to, ha this is a way to enable these people to take two jobs. So since you are self-employed, you are free to do whatever work you would like to do. So that's what I recently did with my firm. Three years ago, when I started the business in U.S., I decided to forget the word employees, and uh, I decided to have all the people working for the company uh, independent. So tax-related uh, information and insurance-related things, uh, they dis we decided to share the information among ourselves. And uh, I have seen a significant increase in performance. Uh, bad things or inefficiency just disappear. They just go away. We made them really uh, in, independent, and um, all of all, everybody was uh, quantized. And to do that, there is a necessary technology. 
um, probably things like blockchain, as we call it, uh, do uh, the self-management on their own, and um, whatever they do would run as blood streams, naturally as blood streams, probably rights or salary. You don't really have to control every and each detail, but something uh, a technology that will enable things to, uh, like that to happen uh, without being really careful and uh, looking into the details. This is what we call uh, the visual technology. So this is the same for VAR, communication technology, same thing. So as we see increase in such type of uh, technology, I think um, people will be able to exist as a single, not, as a, not only as a single person, but as a multiple number of uh, people, synesthesia, uh, would be part of that technology. Uh, you would exist remotely. So how are we going to uh, share things using technology and create the feeling that you're together with that person? Maybe it's probably going to be beyond that feeling of being together. I'm doing things like agricultural support. I'm pro providing support for revitalization of local areas. I don't receive fees in cash. I receive produce, like vegetables. So uh, in the season, I start receiving rice and vegetables and so on. That's the kind of fee I receive. So because I want all of these, all these produce, I provide different advice. But I'm really satisfied with this setup. So. With that, I will be, I'm able to deepen the relationship with the people I work with. But that is also changing, too. I know that we're talking about local areas. There are still people who are not empowered by the internet. I'm quite concerned about them. Takram came up with a, a language map uh, that you showed in the presentation. The other day, I watched a movie on whaling called Okujira-sama. There are a lot of people uh, come to a small town of Taichi uh, who are engaged in anti-whaling activities. The people living in that community are not com sending messages using the internet. So there are no voices of these people who are engaged in whaling uh, exist on the internet. And uh, uh, the, the the images are created by people who are anti who are anti-waiting are sending a lot of images.